She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Welcome, welcome everybody to Live, Love, Thrive Women's Empowerment Hour. Today we have on a special guest. She is actress Rebecca Metz. Please give her a warm welcome. Hi. Hi. How are you? I am well, thanks. How are you? Well, things are rocking and rolling for you. I know you are a series regular on Better Things on FX. Mm -hmm. You're loving that. I am loving that. I'm a recurring guest on Better Things. Re recurring guest yes. uh, as Tressa. Yes. Yeah, and then um, also a Disney mom. Mm-hmm, Disney yeah. Channel mom, yeah. How fun. Yeah. And it must be crazy right now, you said, going between the, the two shows, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was, there was um, last season they overlapped, and so there were a few days when I was going from one to the other back and forth, and it was like, remember which lines are for which show? <laughs> I, I can't even shows. imagine. Even when I do back-to-back -back interviews, I'm like, oh, I hope I remember who's yeah. who, you know? Yeah. yeah, I can't. I could never be an actress because I could never memorize the lines. It just wouldn't happen, you it's, know? It's really, I mean, it's really funny because I think for people... For people who aren't actors, that's kind of the first and biggest thing that they think about. And it is. For me, that's not even a thing anymore. Oh I'm, my gosh. At this point, well, I that's have why that you're muscle an actor. <laughs> really strongly. It's all the other stuff I have to worry about. Yeah. But that yeah. part isn't a big deal. So, you know, for everybody that thinks this is an overnight success story, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to talk about your journey to getting here mm -hmm. to being a working actress, which is a, a big deal in Hollywood. It's yep. not easy. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about how not easy that path was. But it kind of started with uh, your childhood. You grew up in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And New Jersey uh, was... Um, uh, where you, you know, kind of discovered that you wanted to do acting even as a kid, right? Yeah. 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 So you're in um, my, my, I grew up in a family that was very much about the arts. My parents are both yeah. classical singers, and yeah. so they were always involved in choruses and choirs, and so that was, I took piano lessons, and, right. and the arts were a big part of my life, but not acting necessarily. Right, right. Um, but I, and I, you know, when, when their chorus would do a musical that needed kids, I would be a kid in the show. And so yeah. I sort of got a taste early on of what, you know, performing was like and yes. being on stage. And yeah. I remember they did a production of Carousel um, and I was one of the kids in the show yeah. on this little carousel that pulled by the stage hands and the, and the curtain came up at the Garden State Art Center and I looked out at you know, a few thousand people, and it was. I got that rush, and was yeah. like, "Oh, this is this is this cool." Is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. so kind of started going from there. And I love and that show, by the way, Carousel. Carousel yeah. yeah, that is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, I bet it's dark. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but launched oh, your career. So beautiful. <laughs> yeah, sort of. somewhere there's a picture of me as a snow child in Carousel. But um, so yeah. after doing uh, theater and community theater. Mm -hmm. uh, as a child, then uh, at what point did you set your sights on, on being like, this is what I want to do for a living without your parents thinking you were crazy, right? Yeah, well, I can't <laughs> speak to how long it took them to stop thinking I was crazy, but I would say in, in junior high school, yeah. I, um, I went to the library and I did a big research project all my own doing of the best acting schools oh. and, and you know back in the days when you had to look things up in books yes. and look up scores and all those kinds of things I remember that well yes <laughs> and I settled on Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh oh, wow. and my parents who were very um, you know encouraging excited that I was so excited about going to college yeah um, took me to Carnegie Mellon and we did when I was in eighth grade we did a tour of the campus and we met with the head of the department, and I was like, well, I'm coming here, so you may as well let me in because I'm going to show up anyway. And, um, you know, everyone was sort of like, oh, good for you. She's yeah. very precocious. That's yeah. wonderful. And um, and four years later, that's where I ended up going. I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm a big believer in that. What you think and what you say yeah. and what you visualize definitely manifest. Mm -hmm. So you set your sights on this acting career, and you weren't stopping till you got there, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Uh, so you got out of school and then everything took off? No. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, yes, it was so easy. Um, what, what, right after school, did you come out to L.A.? I did. Yeah. I knew I knew I didn't want to go to New York. I'm from there. And it, yeah. you know, it, felt, it kind of felt like I could always go home. Yeah, and you were feeling more TV and film than you were I was, uh, theater. Yeah, I was yeah. really interested. I mean, just the idea of, like, if there's a sink, it's a sink. And yeah. water comes out of it, you know, yeah. instead. And I was, I loved the idea of trying something new. I'd been doing kind of exclusively theater. So you didn't want to do the long, sink, long you wanted time. to do the bathtub. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Something like yeah, that. Okay. Something like that. I just wanted to try something new. It was, it was right. 
right around the time that The Sopranos was on and TV was just starting to do new and interesting things, which right. it still is. Yes. Um, and starting also... Starting to do better things. Starting to do better <laughs> things. And also, I had spent four years in Pittsburgh, yeah. which um, has tough winters. And so oh, yeah. I got off the plane in Los Angeles and was like, sold. Yeah. That's it. I'm, I'm moving here. Yeah. I don't care, I don't care what, yeah. what that means. And um, actually, one of my professors at school gave me one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten that I still give to people, which was move where you want to live. Because yeah. for... Th for a long time, you're going to be doing more living than working. Right. So you need to be in a place where you can be happy living. Right. So, so you'll it didn't have the give energy you Betty to Davis's do all advice. the work. Remember, she said to uh, an actor, said, what, what, "What is the advice you'd give an actor?" Take she fountain. says, "Take fountain." Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> got to tell also you, good advice. Yeah, yeah. Except for now, <coughs> fountain is bumper to bumper. Everyone's so figured that like, out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all because of her. Mm -hmm. Thanks a <laughs> uh, lot. Yeah, thanks, Betty. <laughs> so, um, so now, while you were on this path of wanting to be a working actor, mm -hmm. you were doing other jobs. Like oh, pe yeah. people have to understand that they actually have to make a living while they're doing this. So for seventeen years, you yeah, told me full time office jobs. You did jobs like. Let's talk about all the jobs you did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you even told me you did telemarketing, which you hated. I did yeah. do telemarketing, and I did hate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about, uh, what else did you do? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I did telemarketing. I temped, you know, office yeah. stuff. I, I knew how to use computers. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of actors don't, I think, and I was bad at waiting tables. I yeah. know that's the stereotype is that actors wait tables. Right, um, right. I, I could not do that. But I tried it. Food service is not for me. But but the hilarity of it is, wasn't that like your first uh, recurring role? Wasn't it a waitress? As a waitress, yeah. <laughs> Life has yeah. its A uh, grumpy waitress, fortunately. Yeah. That the universe really was laughing at. on you on that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm castable as a grumpy waitress, yeah. not an actual waitress so that who worked. manages to get, make tips. Yeah. yeah. So that was my uh, question is, what was your first recurring role? Um... I think, though I would count shameless. Yeah. I would say shameless. There which was the waitress job. Welcome to the Love Drive, yeah, the Women's Empowerment Hour, Hour brought to you by 360karma.com. Uh -huh. um, what was it like when you got, because there's so many actors that listen to the show and, you know, they're struggling and they're trying and, uh, you know, and I know they don't want to work, but you have to realize you have to work yeah. and do the gig, yeah. uh, as many writers and producers and everybody does too. Uh, what was it like when you finally got that call and uh, that for this part on Shameless? Well, the funny thing is that it wasn't, um, it wasn't like I got the call and I quit my day job. Uh huh. Um, what happened was, I in 2011, right before I got married, I got laid off from uh -huh. my day job. Oh. It was you know the economy was bad yes. and, and things were really tumultuous. Yep. I got laid off from a day job I really loved. Um, and which and, was uh, I was uh, ironically I was working at Disney for a long long time first as an executive assistant and then mm -hmm. I moved into um, I did customer service for a while and then I moved into something called online community management for online games so I was working for a game called Toontown yeah and sort of um, as the community manager the person who worked kind of between the team and the player base to right. make things exciting and you know I really, we had a great, t I loved that job. Yeah. Um, and then I got laid off. Yeah. And um, I was unemployed for a while and then I needed another job and I got a, another job in online sort of community management and customer service and then I got laid off from that. My husband and I took turns every year for four years, one or the other of us got laid off. It was really right. hard. Yeah. It was a yeah. really hard time. I remember time. The, uh, after the recession, it was, it was we tough. We had just bought a house. We had a mortgage. Oh gosh, it was wow. like scary. It was really scary. Yeah. And, and we, the, the jobs we got after the layoff jobs were worse and paid less and didn't have benefits. And mm -hmm. finally we each sort of said, well, you know, if I'm going to be unstable and not have benefits and not make enough money and not have any security in my job, I'm at least going to do it doing what I love. Yeah. And so after the second time I got laid off in four years, I decided I'm just going to commit full time to acting. And so wow. the shameless job came through while I was unemployed and trying to make it as an actor. And wow. so it was a huge relief, but it wasn't, um, it was just a like, okay, I think this might work. I wow. think I might not have to go find another crappy 
day job. Is That's it, what that phone call was like. I wonder if like the universe said, okay, now she's she's ready to do this full time. I definitely believe yeah. that opportunity fills the space you give it. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I, I started working more when I wasn't working, which is not to say that actors should sit around right. being unemployed. Right. Because I had tried this before, making it solely as an actor, and it didn't work. Now, so, over those know, 17 years that you were working these jobs, you were doing some pretty big mm-hmm. things, right? Is this when you did, like, Boston Legal? Oh, and yeah, Nip Tuck. And Nip I, Tuck I was building and, up all of those credits, and people would see me around the office and say, what are you still doing here? Right. And I would sort of say, well, you know, those jobs pay pretty well for the week that you're doing them. But right. But my landlord wants the rent every month. So right. I still have to... <laughs> I still have to do this. Yeah, and there are so many actors out there that this is the case, that uh, you you can't do it full-time right out of the box. You do have to slowly but surely build up your credits. And it is working two jobs because, let's face it, going on auditions is definitely a second job. It takes a lot. And, like you said, trying to find a job that allows you to do that. So 17 years of doing both jobs and auditions, and then finally... You get this gig doing Shameless, Mm -hmm. and has it kind of been, you know, building ever since? Yeah, it's been slow and steady ever since. So I got Shameless. I was on another, I recurred on another show on um, what was then ABC Family and became Freeform. That's probably why you got all the jobs. You, You got Shameless. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. I was on a show called Recovery Road. Better things came along in there. Right. So there. then right. I was sort of recurring on three different shows, right. which is a nice position to be in. Wow, that and is. And then the Disney show yeah. came along, kind of wow. shameless ended. The Disney show happened. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of a gradual yeah. growth into where I'm at now. I think the universe also builds a momentum. Like when, yeah. you, you know, when you get one job, you get four, like you said. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's interesting because... It, there really is an energy to it all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It, now people go, oh, my God, you've been on so much stuff. And it's yes. almost like it happened while I wasn't looking. Right. Because for a long time, it just felt like I was incrementally one by one, like like climbing the ladder and right. up one rung and down two. And, you know, that's really how it felt for a long time. Right. And then... And then you get there, and everyone's sort of like, well, look at you. Everything's so fabulous. And yeah. it's like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was a long time coming. Right, right. So I appreciate it now that it's here. Right now, you're working on an interesting show because Better Things is uh, produced, written, starred in by a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is like a, a rarity. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see more and more of that. And one thing you shared with me, it, it, what's her name? Pamela Adlon. We should all know that, we Pamela Adlon. And she also makes it a point to make sure that the crew is pretty much half half women, half men. Yeah. Uh, women doing things that aren't traditionally crew parts for women. Mm-hmm. And I love this woman. I don't even know her, but you, I, I mean, <laughs> I think she's amazing. Uh, it's what we need more of in Hollywood. Yeah, it's the yeah. most female crew I've ever worked on. And, and in one sense, it shouldn't matter because all that matters is the jobs are getting done, but it... It, you know, as an actor in front of the camera, when I look up and see so many women on the crew, behind yeah. the camera, in the camera department, in the yeah. sound department, in places where you don't usually see women, yeah. it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference yeah. to me. It makes a difference in the tone on set, in the, the energy outcome. on set, the outcome, the vibe. Yeah. It, it, um, yeah. And the, the men we work with say it's so wonderful. They're, it's a different energy. Yes. And it's, I think it's, healthy for them to have the experience of being in a female dominant set because you know the women have all always had the experience of being in a male dominant set and you have to learn a particular set of coping skills for that and I think it's healthy for the men to get that experience. Right that is so wonderful I love hearing that Mm -hmm. and uh, you know over the 20 years I can imagine that you really noticed that shift Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's still, if you look at the numbers, we still have a long way to go long to get to, to go. even parity. But television is doing, um, is it's happening faster in television than it is, I think, in movies. Mm-hmm. And um, there's there are now a lot more shows. On the Disney show, we yes. have a, a lot of female directors, women oh, of color, people great. of color directing. There's a lot more diversity and representation. Um 
in everything I'm working on now, which is really encouraging to me. Oh, definitely encouraging. You know, and, and I don't know how you feel about this, but a lot of people say, well, you know, um, there shouldn't be that, you know, half the crew needs to be women or whatever right. because it should be the best person. Well, do you know how many times the best person has been a woman and they've been passed over? Right, I mean, I think that's... Because they're a woman? That's easy to say. Yeah. That... That's lovely, yes. except that there hasn't been even opportunity all along. Right. So, so if, if over the course of the entire history of the industry, women haven't, their jobs haven't been open to women or right. people of color, there hasn't been equal opportunity. And so if the best person for the job is the person with the most credits or the most impressive credits, you have to consider that that's not because they always were the best person for the job. Right. Exactly. It's because they were the ones who were given the opportunity, maybe not based on merit. Right. And so you do need to make a proactive effort to seek out and encourage and mentor mm -hmm. people who haven't had the privilege Mm -hmm. of being the ones who got the opportunities first. Yeah, because, historically. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, TV and film or whatever uh, vertical, um, you know, uh, it's been an old boys club because uh, men try, you know, they'll hire their buddy. Yeah. And even if it's not the best person for the job. So yeah. that's the mold that we've got to break. And, and it's know. not, I think it's important to say it's not malicious. It's not like right. there's a bunch of white men in a room going, <laughs> yeah. how do we keep this only among us? Right. It's just... It's human nature. It's we, we, to hire your friends. We, to hire your friends to True. write roles for people who look like you do because right. that's your life experience. Yes. And so that's why it's important to get people in positions right. of power who come from different backgrounds yeah. and different experiences. What, what's, your, uh, what's your dream uh, role that you haven't played yet? I don't know. Don't, yeah, I don't, oh, you don't know. Have I don't sit mind. around thinking about that. I mean, I would yeah. love, as a character actor, um, most of the time I am there's the lead and I'm the person who comes in and, and interferes or, or affects the lead's trajectory. Right. And it would be nice to be the lead once in a while and be the one having people yeah. come in and, and affect my trajectory. But right. that's, um, that's more about just doing different things and, and working on different kinds of projects and different kinds of roles. So I'm, I'm open to it. I don't right. have kind of a, an ideal Except right. for um, sometime when I am older than I am now, I want to do like a Maggie Smith role. I want to be yeah. like Lady Bracknell and the importance of being earnest. Yeah, see, see, I knew there was something back you're there. Right, yeah. You're right, you're right. <laughs> I want to be Maggie Smith when I grow up. That's my dream role. <laughs> do we have a clip? Uh, so we have a clip from, I believe, Better Things. Uh, oh, wonderful. I think, so let's take a look at that if you haven't seen the show. Hello. How'd it go? The reading? No, the opera. Yes, the reading. Well, there's a lot of buzz. Mayor says they're gonna take it to Broadway. Oh, Mayor's there. Yeah, she's the one who thought of me for this. You know, she figured that the playwright and I might connect, so... Mayor told you this? Yeah, after the thing. What? So you wanna do it? I don't know. But this is good. It's good. I'm gonna make this an easy conversation for you. What conversation? You obviously feel the need to move on to greener pastures. And I get it. We've been together a long time, and we both respect each other, but you feel the need to shake things up. I don't. I'm not saying that. Have I said that? And I value our friendship too much to stand in your way. This conversation has been a long time coming since the movie. And I want you to feel that you have the support you need. So wait. I will step aside. Wait, 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 wait. Tressa. You don't need to say another word. I get it. Best of luck to you, Sam. Very cool. <laughs> so, uh, so you love being on this show? Yeah, yeah. I love being on the show. Yeah. I feel like you talk about manifesting. Yeah, I feel like I have manifested the perfect project for me. Like I everything love it. about it is so squarely in what I love. I feel very lucky to have landed there. So, tell us a little bit about that clip. And that show. So um, the show is about Sam Fox, played by Pamela Adlon, who is a single mom working actress, which Pam also is. Uh, and I play her manager, Tressa, and and one of the people who's in her close circle of friends. Yeah. So it's very much, it's complicated because they have a professional relationship and a personal relationship. And as happens in this business, those two things get mixed up right. and sometimes entangled. And so... Um, I'm basically breaking up with her professionally in that clip. I, I'm kind of 
she is, um, she's been, for lack of a better term, flirting with another manager, and I, I've seen it, and I oh. see it happening, and so I am sort of preemptively saying, look, you want to be with this other manager and you're afraid to tell me, so I'm going to do it for you. And, and that has ramifications, obviously, for their professional relationship and for their personal relationship. And yeah. so, you know, we sort of see. Now, do you read something like that and go, am I on the show? <laughs> um, <laughs> a just little guessing. bit. I was like, oh, is this you kicking me off? But I, I was assured that that was not the case. I mean, th this the show is so well written. You get something like that, and it's just juicy. Just it's, gold. It's yeah. it's a half hour show, so it gets put in the comedy category, yeah. but it's not that simple. There's a lot yeah. of emotion. She Pam calls it the feelings show. Yeah, it sounds um, great. I hope more people tune in. It's I know it's popular on FX. Mm -hmm. um, FX is coming out with some really great programming. It's a great environment. They're really doing a lot to sort of let creative people be creative and get yeah. out of the way. I mean, yeah. that's that's what I. I just saw him. a great uh, series on there, um, the one about Fosse. Oh, Did you yeah, see Fosse that? Verdant, oh, my God, sure. that was such a good one. Yeah. And, and, I mean, they have stuff that is so different. Yes. And, and, um, they're, it's, they're really coming out of the box. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think people are digging it. Yeah. Um, and if they haven't, they should check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Uh, so this, this role is way different than your <laughs> very first, which was, on politically correct, politically incorrect, yeah. Polit politically incorrect. Sorry, um, and yeah, we were you were telling me that you played. It was like a back when it was the Clinton Lewinsky scandal, uh -huh. and you had to play Linda Tripp. Yeah, it was the, a sketch the, where the everyone involved in that scandal was in high school. It was like a dishy high school thing, and Ken yeah. Starr was the hall monitor, and everybody was gossiping about <laughs> what was going on with Bill and Monica, and I sort of wander in in a bad wig, and I was Linda Tripp <laughs> recording what everyone was saying with a device in my locker. I that love it. So is this, on, debut. is this somewhere on YouTube? I don't know. I've never <laughs> tried to look. I think I'm going to look for it. Uh, yes, please do. <laughs> that sounds like a hoot. So that was like your, your first your first gig yeah 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 and and was that exciting to you it was incredibly exciting yeah it was also yeah. very strange because that it was unlike any job I've ever done since in that you know it's very topical so I had the audition at like four o'clock and they basically said if you get the job you're just going to stay and we're going to shoot it oh my god within two hours oh wow which is not how television usually works right, so it, right. was, it was super quick yeah kind of like bing yeah and then it was over right so um I've never done a job like that since yeah. Um, but it was super That was a great fun. show. I miss it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great show. <laughs> so um, you are married. I am. And, of course, everybody wants to know, are you married to an actor? No. Congratulations <laughs> to me. No, I, I uh, at some point, I, I met my husband on the Internet I because I did not want to date actors anymore. Okay, so I want to know, why didn't you want to date an actor? Um, Just for <laughs> me... Just spill the dirt. Uh, Just. <laughs> people are always telling me I don't seem like an actor. I'm yeah. very driven. I'm very organized. Very I'm authentic. Very, um, a yeah. lot of actors yeah. aren't. Yeah. And um, I was a little tired of being like the responsible one in the relationship and, yeah. you know, letting him be the free spirit. Oh, and right. I, you know, so right. um, it's my husband studied playwriting. Mm -hmm. He got a master's in dramaturgy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sort of went, mm, this is not a great way to try to make a living. So oh, he but is it's a, good. So he understands you. He speaks the language. But he he's doing something it. different. Do we want to say what? He's a journalist. He, he oh, writes mostly perfect. about music, but um, so he's still about a writer. all kinds of things. He's yeah. still a writer. We both have creative oh, that's careers. Perfect. Yeah, but not yeah. not doing the same thing, which oh, is good for me. That sounds perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, do you have something on the horizon that you want to talk about you're doing, or are you mainly just engrossed in these I'm engrossed right in these shows. Yeah. We're shooting Coop and Cammy Ask the World season two right now. Better Things season four is going to start soon. Oh, great. There's some other things on the horizon. Season four. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. every season because Pam does so much. Every season, I think yeah. she's so tired. There's no way she's going to want to do this again. And yeah. then, you and know, then she, she gets a little rest yeah. and decides and then she look wants out. to do it again. Yeah, yeah, she sounds amazing. Thankfully for all of us. Well, thank goodness uh, the tide is turning. I know you said you didn't really have any me too movements in this industry mm -hmm. which is great to hear uh <laughs> but only like when you were waitressing and stuff like yeah. that so you know if you're a woman there's no escaping 
some Me Too stories for sure. Yeah. But, um, but hopefully that's going by the wayside in Hollywood too, especially as more women are the directors and call in the shots and there'll it's, be a lot less of that harassment. So it, that's a good thing. It's funny, on the Disney show, we had to have corporate harassment training. Only my co-stars are all teenagers and kids. Yeah. So I went through harassment training with a bunch of teenagers. Yeah. And it was really encouraging because they're going through, you know, you can't do this. You can't make fun of someone for their religious headgear. You can't do this. You can't. And all the kids were like, why would anyone need to be told that? And, you yeah. know, they go through these examples. Isn't Is this wonderful? harassment? Is this harassment? And the kids were like, yes, do you actually need to explain this to adults? And I was like, oh, my oh, gosh. I, I have hope in the future. Thank God for the young people. Yeah. yeah. They're all pretty clear on what's appropriate yeah. and what is not. Yeah, so they're leading the way. Yeah, I mean, they're the ones out there putting together the fights for, you know, no guns and things like that. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing group of kids coming up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They've got their heads on straight, I'm happy to report. Yeah. So um, you uh, are loving what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to one day do a Maggie Smith role. <laughs> or, or how about this, be in a movie with Maggie oh, Smith. I can't even. I would have let's to. Let's manifest that. Let's for manifest you. that. Ma Maggie Smith, Judy Dench, and me, <laughs> and Kermit I, the Frog. We'll I throw love in it. all of my idols at the I same love time. It. And is like everything you do comedy? No. Oh, okay. No, I've done actually more drama than I. I always thought I would do mostly comedy. Yeah. I've done more drama than um, I expected to, and and better things and Shameless both I think fit into categories like I said of shows that are sometimes comedic and sometimes dramatic and right. most of what I've ended up doing and what I've loved doing are things that kind of ride that line because yes. yeah. that's how life is it's funny sometimes it's yeah. dramatic sometimes you know that feels like the full human yeah. experience right so um, that tends to be where I've worked most and where I'm happiest working so other than telling our viewers who want to aspire to be an actor to take Fountain, what other <laughs> advice do you have? Um, take your training seriously. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people want to skip. I get, I get a lot of questions from people like, how do I get an agent and start a movie without any acting experience or training whatsoever? It's like, well, you don't. <laughs> Good luck with you that. You don't. Yeah. Um, go get some experience and some training. Right. People want to work with people who know what they're doing, who right. they can trust. Um, in a high pressure situation, yeah. which acting always is. I've worked with a lot of actors, and I, my advice would be show up. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. the worst, right? They don't even show up. Well, I think that's part of training and experience, yeah. is understand what's expected of you and take it seriously. Like, yeah. it's not a, I think people think it's a glamorous, frivolous job. Yeah. And um, if you treat it that way, you'll have a job for a minute, and then you right. won't anymore. Right. It's that old saying, I think it was Woody Allen said, you know, 80% of it is showing up. Yeah. And, uh, now, being out here in L.A., I understand what he meant, you mm -hmm. know? They, you know, they got to show up. I think a yeah. lot of what has kept me working and will keep me working is that people don't have to worry about me. Right. They, they know can depend I'm going to be you. there. I'm yes. going to know my lines. Yes. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. Right. That's no, a, you're right. That's it. That's, yeah. a, that's uh, a lot. So put nose to grindstone, show up, know your stuff, and just, I think, have that mindset that, I'm doing this no matter what. Right. No matter how long it takes, no matter what it takes, I'm doing this. There, this is my dream, I'm gonna and I'm living it. I'm going to do it whether anyone pays me for it or not. Yeah. You know. Oh, don't tell them that. Well, <laughs> now they don't have a Edit choice. Edit that. Thank you, sag -Aftra. They don't have a choice anymore. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, I mean, how many thousands or millions of actors are out there looking up to someone like yourself who has actually gotten there mm -hmm. and I think it's a, a beautiful thing thanks for sharing your story can't wait to see what you're in and can't wait for you to be on with Maggie Smith so I'll, I'll amen to I that. want an email when you get that I promise <laughs> thanks so much thank you thank you for tuning in and make it a great week hugs and happiness